This is an NBC News update. I'm Stephanie Stanton. Here's what's making headlines at this hour. Where Lindsay Lohan goes, trouble seems to follow. Uh, the prosecutor basically saying there's no way that all of this went down in 62 seconds. And it was the historical drama Argo that won Best Picture. And it was certainly an emotional moment for the film's star, producer, and director Ben Affleck. The former governor of California has acknowledged that he has a child out of wedlock. Yeah, David, that registered sex offender, 30-year-old John Albert Gardner, was arrested Sunday in connection with this case. He's being held on suspicion of rape and murder charges. Elizabeth Taylor passed away early this morning here in Los Angeles at Cedar sinai Medical Center from congestive heart failure. In 2001, financial advisor Jeff Ingram sent several emails to the couple, essentially warning them of their spending habits, saying that the couple was cash poor and that they could run out of money within just a few months. It was like like a real life episode of CSI, they used uh, magnetometers, some special lasers. They even had a blue light that could look for the presence of bones. The title right now, the working title, is called Rodham, yeah. and it's creating a lot of buzz in Hollywood. You guys, now, all the buzz here at the LA Auto Show, of course, GM's IPO. And joining us now is uh, the vice president of marketing, Joel Ewanik. Thank you so much for being yeah, with us. For now, me, I'm Stephanie Stanton, NBC News, Los Angeles. Good morning to you, Tamron. You know where Lindsay Lohan goes, trouble seems to follow. Just as the actress is on the verge of a professional comeback, drama seems to be the driving force behind her personal life. The crash happened on this stretch of the Pacific Coast Highway in Santa Monica, California. Lohan was on her way to the Malibu set of the Lifetime movie Liz and Dick when her black Porsche collided with a dump truck. These photos from TMZ show the mangled car. Lohan was taken to the hospital by ambulance where she was treated and back on the set later in the day. The police say that they did test Lindsay and that they determined she was not driving under the influence. The accident comes as Lohan was once again trying to put her troubled past behind her. It definitely was something that had a lot of people wondering, gosh, is she just sort of doomed for these kinds of things to happen to her? Her legal troubles began in May of 2007 with her first DUI arrest. That same year, she entered rehab for the first time in what would later add up to 250 days in five different rehab centers, including Betty Ford. Court appearances like this became routine for Lohan, who went before four different judges in some 20 court dates. If you violate the law, I will remand you and set no bail. In the past five years, Lohan was sentenced to jail six times, but served less than two weeks behind bars due to overcrowding. Finally, after completing community service, she was released from felony probation in late March and began rehabbing her image. First, a stint hosting SNL. Then, during an appearance with Matt, the actress talked about her upcoming role as Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, I'm really honored, um, and I will not let anyone down, especially myself. While producers are betting on Lohan's performance, they're also protecting their interests. They have a lot of insurance taken out on her, and in fact, the executive producer said to me that Lindsay Lohan is now the most insured actress to ever walk on a Hollywood soundstage. The cause of the crash is still under investigation this morning. With so much at stake for Lindsay Lohan, time will tell if Hollywood is ready for yet another good comeback story. At three million bucks for a 30-second spot, Super Bowl ads are the most expensive of the entire year. That is why some Hollywood watchers were quite surprised when Paramount had five of them during the big game. Now, the uh, movie studio that has been called a walking cripple by some Hollywood analysts showcased five upcoming movies, including Transformers, Thor, Super 8, Captain America, and Rango. Three of these movies are not even coming out until the summer. Despite the approximate $15 million bill, Analysts say it's a proven strategy. There is a, a long list of case studies that point out that movies that are advertised in the Super Bowl uh, that, that open up months in advance do pretty well at the box office. And Paramount spent about $3 million more on ads than all of the other big studios combined. Disney had two ads. Fox and Universal each had one. And more, Warner Brothers sat out on the bench this year. Now, Paramount also outspent everyone except for PepsiCo. Pepsi products led the charge with seven overall ads, followed by GM and Paramount with five. And Hyundai had three. Analysts say that the big spending may be a game changer for Paramount.
It's kind of unusual for any movie studio to promote five movies in, in the Super Bowl, but especially for Paramount because, you know, they, they don't have a, a reputation of, say, a Disney or Warner Brothers of, of really opening up their wallets and, and spending, you know, tens of millions of dollars in promoting their films. And another interesting note, Paramount spent more than two and a half times what it did last year. Last year, it had two ads promoting upcoming movies during the Super Bowl, those movies Shutter Island and The Last Airbender. And Carol and Matt, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I really liked the Chrysler, I guess you could call it epic commercial with Eminem. I thought that was pretty good. And the uh, mini Darth Vader. What about you guys? Three, two, one. With the push of a button, Hugh Hefner lit the iconic bunny for the grand opening of the new Playboy Club, where else? Sin City. A very emotional evening for me. Very, very special. The $55 million Ultra Lounge is located atop the Fantasy Tower at the Palms Casino Resort. It's dubbed as a high-rise version of the famed Playboy Mansion. The Playboy Mansion is the one place everybody wants to go. And this is a chance for everybody to go to the coolest party in town. It is the first time since 1988 that a Playboy club has been in existence. They've done a wonderful job. It, it really is a, you know, a, a return of the express, a return of the iconic legend. And, you know, the bunny is back. Palms owner George Maloof partnering with Playboy to help bring back the bunny. Well, I think that it works perfectly. Uh, I mean, you're dealing with, uh, we have a great opportunity uh, with a global brand that we believe in. A global brand that launched its first Playboy Club in 1960 and quickly became the most successful nightclub chain in history. At their height, Playboy Clubs employed more than 25,000 bunnies and attracted more than one million members. Now, thanks in part to Hef and his three playmate girlfriends known as the Girls Next Door, Playboy is getting exposed to a whole new generation of bunny lovers who can experience a modern version of the Playboy Club. Part of the allure of coming here to the club is getting the chance to get up close and personal with the world famous Playboy bunnies. But it'll cost you a $50 cover charge. Inside, you'll find a media wall with Playboy memorabilia custom lounge seating, and a private casino that makes history. The casino was never allowed to charge an admission into an area that had live gaming. That goes back to the 40s uh, when gaming was introduced. So uh, we went two years ago to the Nevada State Legislature and the Control Board and the Gaming Commission and worked on a bill that will allow this opportunity with Playboy. The Palms partnership expected to generate $4 million a year in licensing fees for Playboy. The company also looking to expand the clubs globally. I think the other markets we would be interested in would be other major capitals that have gaming as well as nightclubs. So it would be a market like London or Macau. But will it be enough to give Playboy the long-term financial boost it needs? This deal in and of itself is not wildly material to the potential on the stock price. I mean, it probably creates a point to a point and a half of valuation upside. Last year, the company generated $338 million in revenue, and analysts expect about the same in 2006. Playboy stock has been in the $9 range. Analysts predicting a 2007 price target around $12 a share. Playboy CEO Christy Hefner talking about the company's overall strategy including its recent partnership with adult film star Jenna Jameson. It isn't a change in Playboy's positioning, which is a great lifestyle brand, but it's a great opportunity for the company to have branded entertainment on the adult side. So it's not just the Playboy Club that the company is betting on. Fantasy Tower at the Palms has everything to make a bachelor fantasy come true. There's a Playboy store, an adjoining nightclub and restaurant, and the dazzling 9,000 square foot Hugh Hefner Sky Villa. For $40,000 a night, you too can live like Hugh. There's a media room and the Hugh Hefner signature rotating bed. Did we mention that Hef stays for free? Like they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. On the money, Stephanie Stanton, CNBC, Sin City.